From the motorcycle front, a battle rage between race leader Owen Warren on the open class KTM and Wayne Farmer on the 250 KTM. Farmer won the class in the Freiburg 200, but overall victory has eluded him so far this season. Third place, Grant Wheeler was on a charge to make it a KTM 1-2-3. Martin Kruger was having a steady run on the 300 KTM, while quad leader Donny Kutzer was controlling the race on the Polaris. And Tuani Nell put on a giant killing performance on the 125 Yamaha and was fifth at this point, but being chased by Mark Kirby on the more powerful KTM. Quad championship leader Kuobis Oberholzer was having a tough time in the dust and not able to make much of an impression on race leader Kutzer. Dave Perry had a good run on the 200 gas gas and would eventually finish ninth overall, with R.D. Wilson on the Yamaha finishing 16th after a tough day of racing. Jonathan Duplessis was cautious and finished 10th overall out of 35 finishes in the motorcycle category. <laughs> Seldom has there been a race where there have been so many lead changes. Fomfi was again in control and Weber and Van der Berg had moved up to second overall and were leading the production vehicle category in what had turned out to be an extremely rough event. and LaRue were third overall in the Toyota Hilux and being chased by the De Grieves, while the Euster couple had been relegated to second in the special vehicle category and fifth overall. Race leaders Van Furen and Otten were back in the hunt after losing considerable time earlier in the race. Many vehicles that were raced in the 80s have stood the test of time and are still in active competition use at regional and sometimes national championship level. Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter had also lost time, which cost them the lead, and were now carving their way through the field in the hope of regaining the number one spot. Hank Bester and Ernie Hressel were well placed in the Toyota Hilux, previously raced by Lichtenberg 200 winners Hein Mullman and Cecil Fincham, and would eventually be classified second in Class E and 10th overall, while the hard-charging Tommy van Furen and Liesel Otten had finally come to grips with the Roger Taylor-built Lexus V8-powered Toyota Hilux and were 10th on the road. Artie van Deventer and Ockert Oosthuizen were the Class C leaders and destined to finish 11th overall, with Franz Schutter and Flip Wellman in the hunt for a Class A podium finish. Gary Hodgson had a steady run in the WPP and would eventually end up winning Class B ahead of WPP constructor Wolf Peter Fumfi. The De Witt brothers weren't able to make an impression on the leading group and settled for third in Class B and ninth overall, while Malcolm Koch and Reno Jacobs had to be satisfied with 17th overall and third in Class E. Wayne Farmer led the motorcycle brigade on his KTM. Farmer led the Lichtenberg 200 only to run out of fuel within sight of the finish, then crashed heavily on the Freiburg 200. Owen Warren was flying, while Antoine Nell showed that a well-ridden 125 Yamaha could stay with the larger capacity KTMs. Raymond Jones was being chased by Gerrit Pretorius. The dust was a major problem for all competitors and Jones would eventually finish fourth, while Pretorius retired from the race, which allowed KTM rider Grant Wheeler to gain a place and finish fifth ahead of Martin Kruger on the KTM 300. 
Donny Kutzer dominated the quad category on the Polaris Predator and had an eight minute lead over championship leader Kubis Oberholzer, also on a Polaris Predator. The short sleeve Dennis van der Merwe was in fine form on the Yamaha Raptor and heading for a podium finish. Only 29 of the 65 starters managed to finish the event. With overall leaders Fisser and Leroux long gone in the Toyota Hilux, it was left to Weber and Van der Berg in the gearbox and diff center Toyota Hilux to fend off the challenge from the rest of the production vehicle contenders, who had been slowed by a variety of problems, including punctures. Frank and De Leon de Grief were now third overall in the Toyota Hilux, while Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter in the Rapsa Race Co. had worked their way back into the special vehicle lead. Hey and Caroline Euster were still very much in contention in the Atlas Copco Sandmaster, in which they won the Freiburg 200. The onboard view from Alfred van Vuren's Nissan Hardbody shows just how tight and rough the route was. Production vehicle championship leader Van Furen was having to pull out all the stops in his quest for the lead, but with only a few kilometers to go, it was unlikely that he would gain any places. If anything, he was at risk from son Tommy in the Class T Toyota Hilux. Special vehicle championship leader Fomfi was third and quite content to earn valuable points to add to his growing tally. Back with race leaders Yanni Fissa and Jocks LaRue as they struggle through one of the rocky, car-breaking sections of the route, with Alberts and Hunter less than two minutes behind. Weber and Van der Berg were only a minute behind the race co and still in with an outside chance of overall victory. A strong finish would earn the pair enough points to move them a number of positions up the production vehicle championship log. and Vernon Otten were fourth overall but would eventually be classified sixth overall and fourth in the production vehicle category behind son Tommy and co-driver Liesel Otten. Che mm -hmm. and Caroline Euster were fifth overall in the Atlas Copco Sandmaster with Tommy van Furen and Liesel Otten closing in fast. The Toyota pair managed to sneak by in the dying stages of the race to finish fourth overall. Gary Hodgson ended up 7th overall in the WPP, with early race leader Wolf Peter Fomfi 8th in his WPP. A well-earned victory for Yanni Fisser and Jocks LaRue in the Toyota Hilux, with Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter the special vehicle category winners in the Rapso Race Co. The route was very slow. I had a long glass in my life so slow route. Maar het is gelukkig om niet een paar wielen te gaan. Het is niet meer. Ook eens wat niet moeilijkheid gaat. Het is niet vandaag. Zoals je ziet, is hier voor langs. I think most of the guys, especially some of the national runners, might have come here today to do testing for the desert race. But it was more than a tester. I think it was a car breaker rather. It was exceptionally rough. And uh, we've come across quite a few cars and quads and bikes on, on route, which is already broken down. Uh, it's very rough, but it's, it's scenic, it's pretty. Wayne Farmer finally took home the spoils in the motorcycle category. Third time lucky, from running out of petrol to falling and crashing and hurting my leg quite bad to winning this one. But I'm really happy it's all come together today. It's just a very rough route, a very demanding route, very difficult to pass the cars. It's very, very rocky. Another victory for quad newcomers Polaris with Freiburg 200 winner Donny Kutzer scoring back-to-back -back wins. Ik denk dat Rasmus Motorsport Club een goede job genoemd heeft. We hebben het goed gemerkt. 
Het is een beetje rof geweest. Uh, ik heb zelf twee keer gevallen. Ik heb bij twee mensen ook gestopt het geval. Het. Maar um, verder van die delen was rof, van die delen was vinnig. Maar um, we hebben algemeen goed.